This is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanisms in a game called Chainmail that I played the other day, a two-player session of Chainmail. Um, Chainmail is a game from Buttonshy Games that has a very interesting distribution system that's almost as interesting as my favorite mechanism in the game, which is that it, it's what they call a postcard game. So every month or every couple months, they send anyone who has subscribed to this game uh, a postcard, uh, kind of a thick postcard, with a few cards in the package with the postcard. So it's a postcard in an envelope with the cards. Maybe it's shrink wrapped. I, I actually haven't received it. Joe got it. But it's something that you get in the mail that offers a new scenario. So the, the postcard itself is a map. And uh, it also offer, it comes with a few cards. So some things that you'll be fighting on that map, a special goal, and some new characters that come with that map. And I just think that's really clever that if you really enjoy this game, you can subscribe to it. And every few months you get new content for this game. I think that's awesome. And what that new content is, at least part of it, um, are these new characters or these characters. And they're very asymmetric. They remind me a little bit of the different civilizations in tapestry again that I designed because they're so different and even the the layout of them reminds me a little bit of the civs uh, so like I was playing two characters I think at all times you play with four total characters and so I had two here one had this interesting uh, kind of upgrade system where you'd upgrade along a path and then when you get to the end of the path you bounce back to the beginning of the path I love that um, and then I had this other player that had kind of a one-way action selection track where you're moving around this track in one direction um, and, and uh, activating different actions along the way. So I thought that was really cool. I love the asymmetry in the game, the different characters, how they felt so different in the game. But I think my favorite mechanism is the combat system. Um, combat is not really my thing in games. I don't get excited about combat, but I am intrigued by interesting combat systems, and this is definitely one of them. So it has a, a somewhat of a spatial puzzle here, but without any miniatures, it keeps it very simple. Um, there's a cube representing the, 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 the enemy, the, the, the target that you're fighting. Um, and then you have kind of this co row column system. And you can't really see it in the photo here, but in the column, there are different types of actions. Uh, actually, I don't know what the top one is. It might be heal. Um, then there's prep. The middle row is battle. So if you're in the same row as the bad guy, as the villain, you are actively fighting the villain, and they can actively target you if you're in that row. Um, there's another row, row down here, I believe it was Jab, and then Taunt was down here too. So it's a series of different actions where you can use your turn to move to a different action, but that's your entire turn. So you can move to a different action, but in doing so, you can move out of or into the battle row, making yourself a target um, and more engaged in the battle or less engaged in the battle and less of a target. And so, for example, I, I had a cube here that was very engaged in the battle, very close to the bad guy. So if the, the bad guy was going to attack, um, most likely... Uh, they were going to target me. Uh, there, there's a dice roll that goes into that. Most likely they're going to target me because I'm right next to them spatially, but I'm also in the battle row. But then I have my other character move out of the battle row over to what I think is the jab row, which let me kind of poke at the bad guy from off to the side. But they, I, I had a lot more difficulty poking back at me. There, there was a way that they could do that, but it was less likely than the other die rolls. Um, and you could also move out of it. So I like how you could be in battle, but also kind of be off to the side watching your companions fight while you do something else. All condensed, all the, this entire system condensed into this one card, combined a little bit with the, the actual villain card itself. So I thought this was really interesting that you could have uh, a complex, a fairly complex, interesting battle system with lots of interesting choices, um, but without miniatures, without really a movement system at all. You're just deciding to move up, up or down, one space um, within this this, uh, this this system, this uh, this, this grid, um, but still are presented with lots of interesting choices. So I thought that was a great example of an interesting combat system to share with you, and that is from Chainmail. Uh, if you have any thoughts about Chainmail, if, if you've been a lot more engaged in this system than just playing one game, I'd love to hear your thoughts or your favorite mechanisms, favorite characters in the comments below. Thanks.